Hi, it's Martin and Jack here from the Accelerator team and this week we're going to talk to you about research and development tax credits, shorthand R&D tax credits. Hi Jack. Hello. What can you tell us about what are R&D tax credits? You've, you've, you've nicked my first line from, from my little introduction there when I was just oh, like, oh, R&D is research and development. Just to clear, clear, that, clear that up and give anyone's unsure. It's one of those acronyms though where everyone goes like, oh yeah, R&D and they go, Hell is R and D. What what is R and D? Yeah. So well, well, but yeah. I mean, so people are probably thinking, well, you know, I haven't got a lab jacket. I don't work in a lab. I don't invent wild stuff. But why do I care about R and D? But actually, it can apply to a lot of people, can't it? Yeah, definitely. It's a uh, first of all, we're we're talking about it purely in a, in a tax sense. Like R and D is obviously a part of a of, of a lot of businesses may have a standalone R and D department. Someone who's who's working on the next big thing, basically for them. And, and this is aimed at not just those people and those businesses, it's aimed at everyone that's ultimately trying to make an improvement to their processes, to their products, their services, um, you know, to the, for the wider, the wider science, field of science and technology, essentially. And, and, and we'll, we'll come on to those things, but let's assume in we tick the relevant boxes to say, yeah, we're, we're carrying out R&D per the tax legislation. Um, it's it's a tax incentive in short, isn't it? Yes, it is, and it's a very generous one at that. So it's um, and, and it's it's a strange one because you, you you hear people arguing that it's underutilized, other people say it's overutilized. But what I'm suspecting is that it's you underutilized by the people who should use it, but there's probably overutilized by the people that are know it's know it's a generous incentive and therefore go, oh, well, Chancellor Armand, yeah, knock yeah. a few quid off our tax tax bill. And, and so who, who does it apply to then, and how much is the, you know, so, I, I know there's different variations, but yeah. just, just give us the headline. So we'll, 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 just, we'll stick with, because there are two different schemes, and we'll just focus on the SME scheme for, for the benefit. And SME business. here is still fairly large. It is, yes. For, for most local businesses, it's yes, still a decent sized business. Isn't it's, it? uh, yeah, it's a multi-million pound business. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, it's not, we're not just talking about, you know, your, your two-man little, you know, no, it's, uh, yeah, grand it's, turn of a business here. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. But it's important that in terms of qualifying factors is, it, is that you have to be a limited company because this, this tax incentive comes off your corporation tax return. So it's not, it, it, therefore you, you have to be a limited company, simple as that. There's, so. there's no way around that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of the actual, how the tax benefit works is essentially you have um, a, what are defined as qualifying costs by HMRC and they will probably come onto those in, you know, in a couple of minutes. But essentially, you, you have a, a pot of qualifying ex, um, costs that you have, which you're already getting tax relief on because they're sitting in your profit and loss account. So you're getting your 100% tax relief on those anyway. What the R&D element comes in then is that they basically uplift those costs by 130%. And then that 130% is then knocked off your profits when you're cal- calculating your corporation tax return, or your so, corporation so, tax liability, rather. Okay, so very loosely then, let's say we're, we've got a million pound of... Oh, Turnover, <laughs> um, and we're spending a hundred grand on qualifying spend now. Yep. Without the R and D tax credit, the profit would be nine hundred thousand pound, and we pay yes. a tax on nine hundred thousand pound. Absolutely, yeah. Let's assume all of that hundred is qualifying for this simple example. Yep. Because I know you like your tricky sums, but we'll keep it simple. <laughs> so, what what happens to that hundred grand instead? Then the accounts will still just show nine hundred grand. Yes. It doesn't change the profit per the accounts. It's just the tax thing. Yes. What happens on the tax side now? Then? So essentially, the, if you had a look at your corporation tax return in that example, you'd have profits per accounts of 900,000. What would then happen if you, were qualif- you had a qualifying R&D expense of that 100,000 pounds is that you'd knock off 130% of that 100,000. So you'd knock off 100, an additional 130,000 pounds worth of expenditure. So you're getting 2.3 times the tax relief on qualifying spend. Yes. And where this works then, then is instead of a nine hundred grand taxable profit, we've got what seven seventy. Yes, you pay tax on seven seventy instead of nine hundred, mm-hmm. which is very generous. If it is, do, yeah. If you're doing that kind of work, okay then. So you mentioned it's certain types of spend. What what, what types of spend? Do you, do you need a lab? Do you need like you know? To not at all. Be and a uh, mad scientist in the corner. <laughs> no, not 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 at all. You don't. <laughs> oh yeah, it might it might help. Who knows? Um, the, the main qualifying costs... If you've got one of those, you probably do an R&D, <laughs> yes. but you don't need them to do R&D. Yes, yeah, that's very true. 
Um, so the main costs are generally related to your staff. So R and D is is very much into is very much there to incentivize employing people, and 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 having your having people within your firm working on constant improvement essentially engaged so, with certain activities yeah. yeah so when we're talking about staff costs we're talking about gross wages we're talking about employees and I contributions employees pension contributions uh, any bonuses that they've received uh, if there are directors who are considered kind of their uh, competent professionals within the field and a part of the R&D claim that any contributions that the company makes to their private pension would also qualify as well so that is so there's employees around the world here sniggering at the idea that any of the directors in any firms are competent professionals. But we'll, uh, Barely we'll, competent. Yeah, yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get past that one. Yeah. So it's mainly the time. What about the stuff they use then? So people are normally working with kit, equipment, building yes. prototypes, maybe, you know, incurring software licenses to roll out programs. and. Yes, so yeah, you've, you've hit a, a few areas there. there. So the consumable element of that where you... If you're working within manufacturing and you're using some of the raw material that you normally use to, as part of a bog standard production process, if you're making widgets, for example, uh, if you're then using some of that to actually go away and, and develop something new, and something that fits within R and D, then the cost of that will also fall within your claim. Okay. Uh, if you're working on, the, as he said, on software, if you've had to buy any specific software licenses or subscriptions that that you need in order to do your research and development activities, then they're, they're also allowable as well. So, so this isn't your Office 365 subscription, well, I sent a couple of R&D emails. No. You, you had that anyway. You don't. You can't then just go, well, we'll have a, a bit of that. But if you had to buy something particularly for the, the, the engagement then. Yeah, so it's generally like software developments have to buy certain platforms in order to actually develop some of the, the applications. To, or, to run their stuff on yeah. the prototype on, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting now, and uh, this is quite topical because obviously we just had the spring statement um, where they've announced a bit of a overhaul of R&D which is going to happen in the summer, so this, this podcast is probably going to be out it of date might, very it soon. It might not age well, it yeah. might age very well, we'll see how we go. Yes, but one thing that was announced going from uh, April this year is that the they'll be including hosting costs within, within your software costs now, so any costs associated with hosting R&D projects uh, or solutions that are on hosted, you know, hosted based platforms, all of that, those costs are now allowable for, for R&D purposes, which right, okay. again, it's, it's quite a significant cost for quite a lot of um, software developers out there who are generally doing quite a lot of... Paying Amazon Web Services or Microsoft yeah. Azure or whatever it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of that stuff. Yeah. So, so just to rewind then, we talked about these incompetent directors. What about... There's a lot of directors now in limited companies, and certainly on the small, uh, directly owned and, and kind of controlled companies, tend not to take much in the way of salary. Does it include dividends? It doesn't include dividends, no. No, that's, uh, that's very important, and that's always something that, when I'm dealing with people with R&D, I like to talk about the remuneration strategy, because there is a point where... There could be a... T so, so the base... The base director would normally be better off with dividends and a nominal salary, mm -hmm. but an R and D time incurring director, there's presumably a tipping point where you say, "Well, actually, that hundred grand a year you're taking, or that fifty grand a year you're taking, or that thirty grand a year you're taking, whatever mm -hmm. it is, will be better on the payroll as a salary." Yeah. Even though it's slightly worse off, the fact that you get two point three times the spend is absolutely there a, is yeah, there a tipping point where that is. Worth yeah, there's it there's a few criteria in terms of the the profitability of the business. Uh, the, the size of the remuneration package and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it's always worth bearing in mind if you've got R&D and you as a director are heavily involved in it. Um, it's, it's always important to consider the how that will affect in terms of your tax planning when you're thinking about your, your payroll versus, versus dividends kind of remuneration strategy. So it's quite important. Uh, it's always something that I, not a, a lot of people think of until they're actually preparing their R&D claim and going, ah! Oh, who does all the work? Oh, yeah. Dave. Dave. Dave's not on the payroll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's one of them incompetent directors. <laughs> um, so what if you're not making any profit though, Jack? So we give an example there of 900 grand profit that is reduced by this taxable profit. Mm -hmm. What if you weren't making any profit anyway? So that's the, the other side of the generosity of, of, of the SME R&D claim anyway. 
is that if you're either already loss making or this enhanced deduction of 130% moves you from a accounting profit into a taxable loss, then you can essentially claim those losses back as a tax credit from HMRC at 14.5%. So you're foregoing a little bit of, it, as opposed to the other scenario where you left those losses to be carried forward against future profits, you're foregoing a little bit of that the, the benefit of that. So simply ignoring the changes to CT, you could have banked those losses, carried them forward and saved the future 19% mm -hmm. or they'll essentially buy the losses off you now for 14%. 14.5%, 14 yeah. 14.5%, yeah. Okay. And, and this is an interesting one because obviously with the, the changes in corporation tax coming, some people will be like, I'm all right foregoing you know, the 4.5% um, percentage differential between those two figures. But if we're going up to 23, 25%, yeah. Like that suddenly it, it, like it makes a difference now, doesn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. You might be better off waiting for it. Mm -hmm. uh, it we, we can't go an episode without talking about cash flow. Of course, yeah. So of course that might mm -hmm. change. You know, if you're running out of money, you might have no option but to take the fourteen and a half. Exactly, and that's that's the purpose of it for the HMRC offer that tax credit because ultimately, people that are doing pure R and D, like, they keep, don't they haven't got a revenue it, stream. Yeah, yeah, they haven't got a revenue stream always, like especially startups. When yeah. they're developing a brand new idea, it's, it's generally three, four, five years worth of development time. Before you get anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. like, they need that tax credit. So, a couple of, couple of questions then, Jack. So, most people who are in the world of creating things will know what a patent is. We're not going to cover the patent box kind of tax on the exploitation of a patent here, because a, that, that's a different thing. It's important to distinguish here, you don't have to end up with a patent to get R&D tax credit. No, not yeah, at all. You haven't got to like create something that's never <laughs> been done before ever, and like you know, trademark and all that. It's yeah, there's. Isn't you it? don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah, create some intellectual property as a result of claiming R and D. I think patent box and R and D go hand to hand in a very specific circumstance where a bit like people with mad scientists are normally doing R and D. Yeah, a lot of people with patents mm -hmm. would have done some R and D to to create it possibly. Yeah, it's but, the. But they don't have to be. Bedfellows do they? Could, they could be no. Event. It's yeah. As I said, very specific scenario where you're benefiting. Obviously, they're trying. The HMRC are trying to encourage people to create the intellectual property, and that's what the R and D tax credits are. At the point where you've commercialised it, it's an idea. You've got the intellectual property. Then they want to incentivize those people by giving them a, a more beneficial rate of corporation tax. Is there an international element there? Is the idea that you've created a great idea, keep it in the UK, you don't, it, it, the idea doesn't need to go elsewhere? Is, that, is, is there an element of that, do you think? Potentially, yeah. Um, although if there are, obviously, there are patents, you know, worldwide patents as well, which I think some of the, some of the patents may actually also fall under patent box relief as well. Right, okay. So it's, it's not necessarily just a UK patent. The, the, mm -hmm. But again, we're not covering the patent box. Exactly, but, yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, so despite not covering that, um, who decides whether you're, whether what you're doing is R&D then within this, this remit? Because you might say, well, I'm researching things. Yeah, but is it qualifying? <laughs> it's, it's always a difficult conversation to have with clients because, yeah, they, some of the ideas of what they think research and development is and I think we've we've talked about a couple before where you've got um you know like, that's a bit dubious and well yeah there's I saw one where basically I could already do the thing that they apparently you know, <laughs> yeah the, the challenge they overcame I was like mm, but never mind <laughs> yeah I mean that because I suppose an, a, a point that we haven't really actually made yet is that well we have we've kind of skirted around it is that it's it's not the traditional industries of science lab coats, test tubes, where these, uh, you know, where R&D happens, it happens in all sorts of industries. We've, we've talked about software development, mm -hmm. you know, construction, um, food, food technology, like food production, places yeah. like that, healthcare. These I, th I, th I think one of the early cases that I remember from R&D, and it, it's been out a while now, but one of the early cases was someone came up with a, a better way of sticking breadcrumbs to something like a chicken drumstick or something. It was, you know, quicker and more efficient with less waste or something like that. Yeah. And it improved the process and that, that in itself was enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and as a result, so we've had lots of entertaining conversations with, with prospects and clients about this. Um, but ultimately, who decides this, to go back to your original question, is that there is guidance in place by HMRC and 
um, the Department of Business Skills and, and Innovation. I think that I think the name might have changed since then, but the the guidance has still got their their name on it. But essentially, yes. Yeah, so there's there are definitions of R and D. Um, ultimately, it comes down to to four things. It's like is is what you're doing a single and definable project? Is this something you've actually? It isn't something you've just stumbled across. And like, did oh, you set time aside yeah. to try and do the thing yes. that you're saying you did? It didn't yeah. happen by accident, basically. Yeah. Um, which Nabble didn't fall on your head sitting <laughs> under a tree, for yeah. instance. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the second one is there has to be an advance in science and technology, and there are various definitions of what an advance in science and technology yeah. is, which I'm not going to bore you with. No, no, so, we'll, we'll, we'll do the extended version of that. There'll be a three-hour <laughs> breakaway session for those who yeah, want Yeah, we'll, we'll get the guidance out and we'll read it out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's just for our, for our <laughs> subscribers. Keep it light just for now, though, Jack, yeah, if you don't mind. So that's the second one. That's been advanced in science and technology. Um, thirdly, there needs to be a technological, a technical uncertainty. So at the outset of the project, you didn't go, I know how I'm going to fix this, and you fixed it. There has to be a... I wonder if this will work. Yeah, I, let's could see. Could we try? Let's mm -hmm. see if this does... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the fourth one is... Um, it, it, it's talking about... We've already talked about competent professionals or incompetent professionals. But it, you have to basically answer the question of why aren't my competition doing this already? What? Why am I in a unique position to do this? And why... And why is it why is it new and why why isn't no one else doing it basically? So yeah, so 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 the the context there is if your competitors are all already doing this and you're catching up, mm -hmm. you might be researching and trying to develop a way to catch up. Yeah. But if you just arrive at a place where everyone else is already doing it, that that's just because you are incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> to use a harsh word. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, so so playing catch up with your competitors. So if everyone else is already doing it. You're not answering anything that isn't already known by mm -hmm. a competent professional, are you? Yeah, it's it, it is because there's so much nuance in it as well that how business works is that people don't exactly lay out exactly what they're going to do, and you don't share your secrets, do you? Yeah, so there's there's always wiggle room in terms of even if you're reverse engineering something that you may actually still be doing something new because it still might be slightly more efficient, it might yeah. be slightly more cost effective and cheaper. I so, suppose if all you do though is watch a YouTube video and think, that looks good, we'll try that. It's probably not going to work, is it? No. If, if someone's already made a YouTube video, how to solve the thing <laughs> you're trying to solve. Yeah, that's generally step one in terms that, of... That, yeah. that, that'll be easy to, to knock back by HMRC, won't it? Yeah. And ultimately, it, it, is it HMRC that will have the ultimate say on this? Or is this one of those scenarios where the person doing the work, they, they know if, if what they're doing hasn't been done, you know? They're the expert on their particular topic, aren't mm -hmm. they? Yeah, and that, that's what HMRC are going to come back to because there are lots of boutique um, R&D firms out there who will go out and just prepare a claim for you. They may not pair, prepare all the paperwork that has to go alongside it in terms of best practice. And generally, you need to submit, obviously, the calculations, but also kind of a, a justification of why the company did R&D and how it fits in with the guidance that we just talked about. So answer those four. Those four questions, yeah. yeah. And if they, that doesn't necessarily always happen. So at that point <coughs> is when HMRC will then may raise an inquiry and they'll come back to the company because ultimately the, they are responsible for making the claim. Yeah. And sometimes these boutique R&D firms disappear <laughs> at that point when an inquiry is raised. Um, and that leaves you. And that's why it's so important that if you ever do speak to someone about R&D, is that you fully understand the claim itself in terms of the guidance of, on R and D, how you know what what your arguments for for it, how you know you justify how you you can justify Not the criteria. Just how much tax can I have, please? Yeah, yeah, it's it's because because so the answer should never be from the tax. It should be well, what is the spend? What were you doing? Those sort mm -hmm. of things. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So we've talked. I think you've covered this a little bit, but again, most people might have came into this and. In, might have skipped and like cancelled this already, but <laughs> it's it's not just your you know research labs and your you know triple garages full of bad scientists trying to like get cars <laughs> to travel in time and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It it can be any kind of business. I mean what what I mean I've I've heard of architects designing new ways to stick buildings together. And yeah, it, 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 there's all kinds, isn't there? What's what can you give us a couple of the, the, <laughs> the things that people might not have expected? I mean, not necessarily what they're working on, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, um, 
as I said, healthcare is quite a big one, and, and care homes, which I've, I've just been looking into a little bit uh, over the past couple of days. Uh, so in terms of bespoke uh, new ways of treating uh, dementia and MS and, and things like that, um, kind of unique diet diet and exercise plans, stuff like that seems to right. okay. is interesting. Um, I've also been doing one of the more interesting ones that we've been working on over the past few years is um, uh, a nursery actually, not right. as in like a child nursery, but as in a um, plant a plant nursery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like efficiencies in terms of how they they can grow stuff. Um, nice. Okay. Like like soil fertilizer mix, hydration. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were going to say new ways to like tell kids off. Well, you know, let's not yeah. rule it out, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there That's are any true. nurses out there, you know, give us a call. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a particularly big slipper that you use to like, you know. <laughs> No, that's or, or, not. Or was that ruled out when my yeah. granny, yeah, sorry, it was, uh, my granny's slipper was the last slip I used to, to mm-hmm. teach a child anything. Um, okay, then, so how do people claim then, Jack? So, so they're probably sitting thinking, well, hold on, I'm, I'm doing some hard stuff here and solving some stuff. Where, where mm. do they go? Well, I would, the first port of call is that your accountant should really be a good sounding board for you, really. So you can go to them and say, I've heard about r and I feel like I might qualify. Um, and then... Yeah, just lay out, lay out to them. They they'll say to you, yes or no, and then if they're a specialist in R and D themselves, then they'll go, well, actually, we'll help you prepare the claim. We'll help you prepare the calculations. If not, they'll kind of go, well, they may lay out lay out the criteria for you, and you go away and prepare it. But ultimately, yeah, it comes from probably having a chat with a, with your accountant, or if your accountant doesn't know anything about it, then reaching out to either an R and D firm or maybe someone like us. Heaven, heaven forbid. We heaven plug, forbid. Plug, plug off services. <laughs> um, because a lot, of, a lot of this, once you're actually doing the hard stuff, behind R&D claim is often just a lot of paperwork and, and, and actually pulling the data, which is which is quite like an administrative task, isn't it, often? It is, yeah. And and people don't that's... realise that. I think, well, oh yeah, but mm. I don't know. Half of his job is that. Is it half? Where did he get your half from? Do you have a timesheet? Do you, can you back this up? And... Yeah, that's, that's sometimes the, the challenge comes, isn't it? That's that's a massive challenge, especially if you're coming back um, historically, and that's why when when I speak to clients, I'm very keen to we catch up in terms of let's go back as far as we can because you can go back a couple of years, um, two years from the well, you have two years from your year end date to make a re uh, an amended submission for corporation tax. Yeah. Uh, so if you're coming up to your March twenty March year ends now, um, you would have you could go back to March twenty twenty if you wanted to. Well, you've got yeah, saying that this is coming out. You've got coming a couple out. of days, yeah. <laughs> yeah so unless you're coming ready with your info, don't don't knock. Yeah, yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll call you. <laughs> yes. So um, essentially, yeah, they've. I forgot what I was going. I forgot my point the, there. The, ad, the admin getting yes. get it in retrospect is actually quite hard because yes. you do a lot of like regular sessions with people now. It's not a once a year exercise for you. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. You literally coach people to make sure the information is there as you're doing it. Yeah, totally. Which it's just got to be easier to keep a record as you go. Well, yeah, as, as you said, it's like you go back and generally we're working on percentage basis at this point because it's just like, well, what, what can you remember what you were doing two years ago and how much of your time was spent on R&D? It's a little bit of a finger in the air. Um, yeah. So, and it's quite hard to justify that if HMRC ever went, well, how can you prove that 50% of your time was on R&D? So again, it's at that point we like to go back after we've gone back and caught up, it's like, right, well, going forward, every quarter, we're going to sit down, we're going to chat about our R&D. See if there's any gaps in the, 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 the support paperwork. Yeah, and then also, it's a chance for them to go, well, that's, because again, R&D rarely, rarely happens in isolation. It's not, there's very few clients out there, they just do one project. They're always doing something. So yeah. having a chat once a quarter and then going, well, what projects have you started? Over the last quarter, let's let's talk about them. Do they qualify for R and D? Yeah, and it it, it it works really well, and it means that there's there's less administrative ad, admin. I was going to try and do the full the full pronunciation we'll go, we'll go there. Admin, yeah. Uh, yeah, without doing the admin at the year end, because even going back twelve months is it's quite difficult to fully so quantify. E- even things if you're like a professional firm. So if you are an architect, and not not as many businesses as you may think do timesheets for instance but mm-hmm. have a code on a timesheet oh well that's when I was that was my R&D bit that was when yeah. I worked on that project alright well let's go have a list of your projects then 
lit. That's where you get your ratios from, your percentage from, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's those are the dream ones where you've got either timesheets or you've got a job costing system that a lot of manufacturers have. Um, they can just simply run off a yeah. then go, well, I know that this project, there's some R&D, this that went on that one. Yeah. yeah, and they'll run off five or six reports and go, there you are, those are the costs. Yeah. But with others, when you, it's, it's generally, it's, when you're a small business, you can just about get away with it. But it's when you get to that kind of mid-size where you haven't really got the Because there's the multiple solutions. people involved as well, isn't there? Yeah. So, so if you're the only person who is doing it, you can kind of go, uh, well, I build 50 grand in the year, so that must have took us 30 weeks. Well, the mm -hmm. rest of the year I was working on that new service line, right? Okay, then. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how many weeks it was. But if you've got 20 people working for you, it's practically yeah. impossible, isn't it? Yeah, and you don't really know. You, you can't really give an accurate figure. Yeah. And then you go and ask someone and they go, oh, what's R&D? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> And so, then. <laughs> so, so, so to recap then, Chuck, it, it could be any kind of business. There's the four questions, solving something that hasn't been done, as long as your competent, you know, competitors don't know about it, improving a process, etc. Um, it's for companies only. SMEs are still big businesses, though, still multi-million mm -hmm. pound businesses. Um, very big, there's a different scheme. Patent, there's a different thing there we talked, we, we, we didn't cover, but might be relevant. Um, and you can normally then go back a couple of years as well, depending on the time and when your account submissions are. Yes. Um, what What is it that prevents people from doing this then? Because well, that sounds, there's a lot. <laughs> we think, oh, well, yep, yep, yep. A lot of people are probably sit and go, I'm doing that. What? Why don't they do it? I think it comes back to the original point is that a lot of people don't necessarily know about it or they have an idea of what R&D is and just, they just don't think that they fit into it. And then from there, it's if you're left to your own devices, it's very much like, I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm intimidated by the fact that my figures are going, potentially are going to be looked at at HMRC. Yeah. They're going to raise an inquiry. They're going to go through all my books. They're going to find that dodgy VAT receipt I put in last month because suddenly they're going to think I'm the, 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 the yeah. most crooked, yeah. Yeah. crooked business owner in the world. Uh, so people, people are generally kind of worried about it. Is there um, an imposter syndrome here as well that you think, I'm not doing anything special? Mm -hmm. I've met some people who are like, oh, that's amazing. I can't, how did you, and they go, no, no, it's not that. Like, they, they don't think they're doing anything awesome, yeah. but yet they, they are really doing some awesome stuff. Is, is there a bit of that, I just think? I think so, and it's, it's really surprising how innovative the SME sector is, especially the clients I've dealt with, like um, just dealing with one client, and they, <laughs> they were just like, oh yeah, so we were, uh, they were doing, um, some uh, surveying of tunnels um, which were used for like um, the train tunnels so people that would they'd be serving their service so they had a camera on the front of a train taking pictures of lots of, uh, of of all angles of the tunnel to check for any structural damage and they were like oh yeah so there's an issue that we were kind of filling up like 13 laptops worth of memory <laughs> for every 100 meters and they were like oh so we're going to have a crack at trying to um, condense all of our memory and data down into a, into a cloud-based solution and they were like and it's like well aren't kind of like Microsoft and Google and Amazon and all of these big tech companies trying to do that and they're like oh yeah but you know we found a bloke up in there uh, up in the <laughs> northeast and he's going to give it a crack and it's just like wow <laughs> incredible so, yeah, yeah and that's just they're just they're just seeing that as a barrier to overcome in their business without necessarily having that trigger mm -hmm. well this actually this might be something exciting and might be able to get some tax relief on it. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah. it could be a multi-million idea if they actually manage to crack it. And it might be worth money. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Yeah. They might be able to sell it, yeah. Okay, then. Good. All right. Well, people know where to come, Jack. You weren't very clear on that. But yeah, Jack does this. He can help you. Sorry, um, I'm just really, really shy about he's this. He's got imposter kind of syndrome. <laughs> he thinks he's an incompetent professional. You see, that's the problem. Well, it's just because you tell me that every day. That's why. Well, well I, know, I know Jack, but you weren't meant to say that on camera. <laughs> um, so yeah, so Jack, Jack's R&D um, and the rest of the team here at Robsonino, we can help you with this. Um, we hope you found that of interest. If you're sitting there and you think, maybe that is me, then, then you know, we have, have an initial chat and we can give you a steer. Um, hope you've enjoyed the episode and... You won't see Jack for a couple of weeks. He's he's, he's off on a belated honeymoon. Um, so yeah. Sorry, it's R and D trip. <laughs> yeah, he's doing R and D in Sri Lanka. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's going to see how they add stuff up in Sri Lanka. Um, <laughs> and obviously, we're going to get some tax relief on that. Not. Um, yeah, but 
see you on the next episode.